another motherfucking podcast. I know you've been waiting. I know you've been scratching your head every day, wondering when is there going to be a new Terror Zone podcast. Well, here you are. We got our man James from Ends of Sanity. James, the man who books Overcome Fest in North Carolina. James, the man who is a f- manager for, for a bunch of awesome bands. Uh, he does a lot of cool shit in the scene, a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff that a lot of people don't think about. So it's very cool that he came on the podcast, take the time. I'm kind of doing a whole uh, tied-down artist podcast. I want to try to get at least at least seven in before the show, at least. I just started a new job. I've been real busy lately, uh, just trying to get shit together. I actually had almost a month off of work. I could have done a bunch of podcasts then, but I chose to do uh, you know, some random housework and shit like that, get things taken care of, and run this motherfucker, you know? Because what I do, I run shit. But I'm back at work full-time, acclimating to the new hours, the new job, still driving a truck. I just start a couple hours later than I used to. And I get off quite a few hours later than I used to. So it's a big, big uh, adjustment to my lifestyle and the way we run our household around here. Um, Yeah, fuck, not a lot going on, but actually a lot going on. I haven't been very active myself. I talk a lot of big talk about, you know, share, do this, support. But what have I been doing? I've been scrolling Instagram, still trying to share these things, but... I could do better. We can all do a little better with our friends and share, you know, buy things, do whatever the fuck it takes to, you know, really look out for the people that you see the most. Um, and nothing, uh, I don't know if there's any fucking great shows coming up a couple weeks here, May 11th, big deals, album release show finally at Edgeman Screen Printing with Bitter, uh, Bitter Truth, Gavel. Strangle You, uh, Liuda, and Vigilante are playing. It's going to be a very good show. There will be some pizza there. I think Joe said, uh, yeah, you have to show up. I don't know if you talk about it. It says on the bottom of the flyer, sponsored by Bubba's 33. So show up early and get your fill, baby. I'm probably going to bring some of my smoked queso to throw on the table, too. So if you really want to get crazy... Come try my smoked queso. There'll be enough of it to go around, hopefully. And if not, you fucked up. Should have shown up earlier. No, but uh, yeah, with everything uh, coming up, uh, tied down just about a month away, they just announced the other opening bands that are on the uh, pre-shows. Luck Runs Out is on the first night with Gridiron, Spirit of Vengeance, Eyes Wide Shut, and of course... Elizabeth, New Jersey's one and only E-Town Concrete. And then Friday night at the Magic Stick, sold out completely. You cannot get tickets for it unless you know somebody who's selling them. Um, Oh, yeah, failed to mention. The first night, there's still tickets left for Edgeman with E-Town. So, on to the second pre-show with Fury, Build and Destroy, D-Block, uh, damn. Oh, yeah. Ceremony. I almost said Foundation. Uh, uh, no Warning. A bunch of good bands. It's going to be a party. And they just added Suffer No Fools from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. If you like, uh, I don't know. I would lump them in, honestly, with like Age of Apocalypse, in my opinion, but harder than Age of Apocalypse. Ha ha ha. I love Suffer No Fools, and them guys are cool as fuck. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, just there's nothing more that I could really say that anybody doesn't already know about how awesome Detroit hardcore is. A couple new bands just came out. Uh, Stop at Nothing just dropped their EP. Uh, Critter from Annie Up. He's in a new band with Matt and Justin from Annie Up. And then they got f- Matt from fucking D Block, the basis of D Block. And our homie Nick Hubbard. Also in Stop at Nothing is in that band. I'm looking forward to hearing it. They just recorded their new shit. Um, Should be out hopefully hopefully within a month or so. You know, get everybody excited about it. I'm really looking forward to it. 
who else is out there? This new band, Cleanse, also has Mike Moynihan and uh, Brad. I don't know his last name, but he's the singer of that band. He plays in Moral Pollution. He was also in Tyrant and a few other bands. He's very talented, but for him to be on vocals, I think that's a newer thing. I'm not quite sure, but he uh, they dropped two songs, really good. Um, you'd probably lump it in with metalcore, but I really enjoy the sound. It's hard as fuck. His vocals are tough. That's what we do. Um, I'm working on trying to put something together for September. I do the Summer's End show. Been trying to build it up more and more every year. I am trying to pull some cool shit off, but uh, you never know. You never know. Just keep your fingers crossed for some badass shit to happen. Um, whatever. Cold as life is headlining Saturday at This Is Hardcore. That's truly amazing. Shout out and congratulations to all those dudes. That's a, a hell of a thing to get asked to do. I don't know if I'm going to This Is Hardcore. I'd really like to try to go for at least Saturday and Sunday maybe. But we'll see. We'll see. And... Lots of cool shows about to be announced. Lots of new music dropping around in our scene. And I couldn't ask for a better time or anything else. I don't know. It's just perfect. Uh, Just count your blessings with what we have right now because it's not going to last. It never does. Nothing lasts forever like enemy of God. Anyway, thanks for listening. Support of Ends of Sanity. Watch them when they come rip tied down a new asshole they played last year and they tore it up. I'm sure the same will happen again this year. They're bigger and better than ever. The whatever. This is it. Enjoy the podcast. All right. Super fun time. It's about to have a great conversation with James of Ends of Sanity and fucking does Overcome Fest, a bunch of cool shit for the hardcore scene and uh Dude, I don't want to say um, Ends of Sanity last year at Tied Down was one of my one of my favorite sets of that weekend, dude. You guys really came and fucking killed it, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys again. Hell yeah! Thank you for uh, for having me, and, and thanks for saying that. That was a uh, yeah, that was a cool a cool time. Jimmy and Curtis kind of just came out of nowhere and was like, "We want to have you guys on the fest. Let's bring you out to Detroit." So stoked to be coming back for a second year. Yeah, um, I mean, I might sound like ignorant or anything. Was there any bands before Ends of Sanity that you were in, played in, sang for? I just, you know, like, you can't know everything in hardcore. I try, but I fucking don't. So, <laughs> no, yeah, totally. Uh, I sang in a band called Detriment from Long Island. Um, we were around from 2012 to 2000, tail end of 2017. Um, we stopped right as i was like getting into like booking bands and shit um and our drummer at the time was focused on vomit forth which is, is what he went to do after that lumpy who runs days was playing guitar for us for quite a bit and he was focused on sanction and then uh my brother was in the band he plays in like a doomy metal band called restless spirit so we were yeah definitely had a band before in the sanity and uh we kind of all stopped doing that and started focusing on other shit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny you say from like 2012 to 2017, those were the years that I was off doing my own shit, trying to figure out life and stuff, you know? So, yeah, you know, yeah, no, I get it. That's cool, man. Um, I've definitely heard the name, but you hear the name and you don't really put it together sometimes. If it's off your radar, it's off your radar. What are you going to do? You know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so you're originally from, from a long Island and now you're North Carolina. Was uh, mm. was like a work move or just something that you always wanted to do? Or <laughs> so you talked about it on Joe's, but I kind of I spaced out because I knew I was doing this with you, so I didn't want to jump ahead. I want to feel like it's new information for me too because yeah, why yeah. would I listen to something day ahead of time and ruin everything for me? <laughs> yeah, no, totally. No, it was pretty much all because I was a broke bum and uh, I was having a son, so it was like. I can't afford to do this on Long Island where, where I'm from. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I had $20 in my pocket the day I found out I was going to be a dad. So it was like, all right, well, let's cut the band 
out and let's start figuring life out so I can, you know, take care of a child. And uh, we're here six years later. So, yeah. Hey, yeah. I mean, I can assume it's probably not very cheap to live on Long Island or within a hundred miles of New York city for that. Yeah. Yeah. No, not at all, but amazing place. So I think it's, it's worth it. You know, if, yeah. you, if you make it work, it's, it's worth it. Nice. Is that where you grew up? On Long yeah. Island? Yep. So I was there. That was so 2017 tail end. I was 24. So I spent about 25 years there. And I mean, I, I have a spot there still now. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm still there most times about twice a month, but it's, it's definitely still home. You know, like I absolutely love certain aspects of North Carolina and being here. But like, when I think of home, I think of Long Island. Awesome. And shit, a hell of a scene to, grow up in like uh when did you start going to shows like what years and what was your uh, first bands that you uh you know that you found on long island local bands at the time um i feel like i've answered this question wrong in the past so i want to make sure i get it right this time but like it's weird what you would can so like first show and then there's i feel like when hardcore people are talking about it first show is like first hardcore show but i mean i've got like my first concert experience you know and then there's like my first so i'll just talk about all of those but like i guess first uh concert which was like it wasn't hardcore it wasn't metal it was kind of there was this band patent pending from long island who um back in like the early ish 2000s like i feel like it was kind of connected to hardcore i mean it was definitely like DIY vibes and like it had some punk influence, lots of ska influence, which I don't like that like style of music at all. But for some reason, I was turned on to them. And I mean, I was in sixth grade. So like listening to System of a Down and Slipknot and shit and Black Sabbath, it was just like, oh, this is cool and aggressive. And they were playing at like an arcade. So that was like my first actual show experience that wasn't like a concert you know like they would play in coffee shops and bagel stores and like my dad would drop me off at the patent pending shows and he would talk to the band and tell them like hey like i'm leaving my son at this show like make sure he's okay and i'll pick him up when he's done and, and they were really cool and, and they did that um and then after that you know i was kind of getting into more of the aggressive stuff i mean my dad really pushed like black Sabbath and that kind of shit on me as a kid. So, um, and then I had like step siblings who were like showing me cold chamber and stuff when I was like in fifth grade. And, um, so I saw it was the metal masters tour. It was black Sabbath, but with Dio on vocals. So they were calling it heaven and hell, uh, Judas priest and motorhead. So that was like my first concert. And then pretty shortly after that, some friends from uh, junior high school were going to a hardcore show and it was Ruiner, uh, This Is Hell, who's a band from Long Island. It was one of their record release shows. And uh, somewhat Il Elijah or Elijah, I don't know how to say it. Some like <laughs> band from that era that had some funky songs. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, but that, yeah, that was the first hardcore show. I saw a bunch of people getting knocked out. There was an ambulance there. It was like typical things you'd see at a VFW hall in 2008 or seven. Um, so yeah, that, that was the first hardcore show. Good, man. Yeah. It's always interesting when you, when you walk into your first show. And how old were you, like 16, 17 or younger than that? I was, younger than that. I was uh, about 14. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. A little younger than I was. I was like 16, 17, going to like dropkick Murphys and the casualties, shit like that. But then eventually moved on to like bleeding through and the heavier shit. But um, I, it, it's funny at that age though, it's kind of still the same, same mindset, I'd suppose 14, 16, like you just like, you see the violence and you're either scared shitless or you're like totally attracted to it. And it's, it's one or the other, like you stick around or you don't, you know, and it's like really like it. It's fucking just to see see the chaos. It's like people getting knocked down, ambulances showing up. It's 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 not for everybody, you know. But yeah, I was I was intimidated. I mean, I'm not going to front like I was some tough 14 year old. You know, I was like 14 fucking years old. I was seeing this shit, and I was like, it was a weird like. I grew up in a really chaotic household, and 
things were definitely like crazy a lot of the time. So it was this weird feeling of like, all right, I'm used to this, but this feels like just so unhinged. And so it was definitely a moment of like, yeah, that was cool. But like, I'm not really sure if I'm like going to jump to go do that again. I mean, I did continue going to shows in a sense after that, but it was like, it wasn't at like there, it felt like at least to me as a young kid, it felt like there was like a, a beat down scene, but then there was also like the hardcore scene, you know, there was like two, there was like have heart sounding bands or like the, you know, the shattered realm sounding bands and it, okay. the scene, I felt like divided. So I definitely like, and they, it mixed up a lot, you know, a lot of Long Island bands were doing like both those sounds. But for me, I kind of like have heart was actually one of the first, like the first band I did when I was like 16, I knew nothing about hardcore really at that point, except going to a few shows and they were like, listen to this band called have heart and uh, try and sing this song. And so that, uh, that first record was, was, was really cool and stuck with me. Um, That's cool. And now you get to play with them at Tied Down 2024. Well, I don't know if you're on the same day or not, but you fucking be around, <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, I mean, I never even saw them. I had tickets to go see that show in 2009 that they did. It was like October of 2009. I think it was the last show or, oh. you know. Yeah, show. of course. Yeah. Um, but I didn't wind up going. The rest of the, the dudes in the band I was playing with, their dads like drove them out to to Boston or whatever wherever it was, but yeah, no, incredible band. It's it's cool to see them Tim playing again. But the point I was trying to make with that whole thing was that like um, a lot of people say like you know I went to my first show and I was hooked and blah blah. It wasn't really like that for me. It was more so like this is cool, but I I needed to find another like area of hardcore that was more interesting to me than just the like you know. Like the absolute chaos aspect was cool, but I just don't think I was old enough to really like appreciate it, you know. So, but just a few years going by, and it was kind of like, oh, okay, this is this is this is supposed to be like this. Oh, okay. Well, well, having a different outlook, you know, growing up, so you see some things that might you know, remind you of some violence you might not like, or you know, whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Bring back some memories. Shit. Uh, but um, but now. So you started booking shows pretty early, like in Long Island before you moved out to North Carolina, or has it always been uh, like a like here and there type of thing? No, I actually never booked a show on Long Island ever. Um, I just didn't really need to. Like uh, there was always people just doing doing that, you know, it, it, I never felt like there was a, and I mean, I would like my old band that I referenced, like we were, playing a lot so we got asked to play all the time on long island and we'd play out all the time so it was just never it wasn't that i was never interested in it there was just never a reason for it you know if 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 someone uh i mean it's it's not like people would ask and i was like no i'm not interested like i said there was just so much good stuff going on and there was everything from the big shit the small shit the big touring bands, the local stuff, the regional stuff. So there was just, for in my opinion, no, no reason for it. Um, yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't actually book a show until I moved to North Carolina, and I was like living somewhere where nothing was happening, and all my friends would be passing through. So rather than give it to, um, I, I did. I started like giving a bunch of shows that my friends would need or bands that I was working with to this one fucking schmuck and he would just fuck it up every time. And <laughs> after that, I was like, I I'm not doing this anymore. I'll just fucking do it myself. So that's kind of how I got into, but yeah, never, never did it on Long Island. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're right though. Like uh, when you look at it, everything surrounding Long Island and even Long Island in, in itself, but crazy scenes forever. So it's yeah. always somebody taking care of that part. You just get to show up and, on play or whatever and that's cool that's really cool because you know sometimes there's highs and lows in scenes and when you're on the east coast everything's so packed together it's kind of like you can just go wherever you need to to see a show instead of like yeah up in the midwest you know detroit here when there's highs and lows it's like but where are you gonna go chicago <laughs> you know indiana not much there so you gotta mm -hmm. that's cool um so you said that 
you just started booking shows in North Carolina because nobody was, and the guy who was fucked it up. And uh, were you able to um, create like a scene there? Is it like is it, like a big like scene now, or did you like how did you get all these people to start showing up to shows if like you're able to do like, overcome fest? Besides yeah. that, are your show nights like pretty like fun? Like, is there a lot of kids that show up? Yeah, so like I don't really do it regularly. It was really just a thing of like when I moved here, like where I was. It wasn't that there wasn't shows in North Carolina. It was that where I was living in the Winston Salem area, there wasn't shows. Historically, there was shows. I mean, before I moved here, from what I understand, like my old band, actually the first out of state show we ever first tour we ever did was a North Carolina show. Like we started North Carolina and that was like 2014 or something like that. And like, I had experience playing North Carolina, traveling through on other tours. When I moved here, I moved to right smack in the middle of the state. So it's like an hour ish from Charlotte. It's like an hour and a half from Raleigh, Durham. It's like three and a half hours from Wilmington, two hours from Asheville. All those places have, you know, a scene and even Greensboro, which is uh, about 35 minutes. It, it's just selfishly. I just didn't want to fucking travel. I was just like, man, like I miss like, you know, driving five or 10 minutes to a show. So I just would go into like, like there was a friend of mine who owned a barbershop. So I was just like, Hey man, like I got my buddies coming through. I, I'd love to try and do a show here where I don't have to put it in, you know, this spot in Greensboro. And, uh, started doing shows there and you know the his I, I kind of learned as i went but i realized there there's a lot of history here you know um just between like i mean north carolina in general i always knew like prayer for cleansing and i'm dying and all that shit but i didn't know that like in winston-salem greensboro kernersville there was a lot of like um like hopes fall and beloved and advent and and all that stuff um was was rich here so it that was like exciting to me because it was like oh like i mean even like foundation played at uh the coffee shop downtown so once i heard that there was like history here i was like oh cool well i'm just gonna go and book a fucking show and see what happens and that's exactly what i did and then i went to like i said the barbershop was a spot for a bit i did shows at this place called break time which was like a pool hall um Pain of Truth. I did uh, Pain of Truth there. It was like their first time. It was our first tour. Um, I brought like Cruelty Year of the Knife to that venue. Our first show was there. Uh, Magnitude played that. And so, yeah, I mean, it, it wound up being this thing where it was like, you know, like build it and they'll come. You know, it was like I, I didn't know what what to expect. And it wound up just being really cool because, like I said, it's very central. So it's like a meeting spot for pretty much everyone in the state. Um and it was really cool. It was really fun. It's just, I unfortunately got to a point where like between having a child, being in a band and and working and, and doing everything else, um, it just kind of made sense to try and solidify one big thing every year rather than a bunch of small things. And um, so, yeah, that that's kind of where we're at right now. But yeah, it, it pretty much was just an organic like... I was doing it because there was a space that needed to be filled in this general area. You know what I mean? Sure. Now, is this, is this a third year doing this or has it been like before second, third, second year, this second year. year. Okay. Yeah. So last year it was like mad ball, pain of truth, D block, right. D block came out for that. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out D block. That was a, uh, that was yeah. a crazy. Like, I've seen the videos from that entire fest, man. Last year it was wild. Yeah, it was great. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, it was really cool. And that, again, too, that was very much like, how's this going to go? You know, like it's it's been a while since a festival like that happened out here, but I was I was I was stoked on it. And it was it was cool to see so many different people in my neck of the woods, you know, as opposed to like traveling somewhere else. But yeah, it was fucking awesome. Sure. And uh, and did it sell out? Like, or is it like such a big place? Like, it's like a hangar or whatever. Is that where it was last? Same place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same place. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it sold out last year. Dang, that's crazy. How many people can it hold? Oh, like 600. Holy shit. That's nice. Pack 600 people in a room, man. It's going to be fucking crazy. 
Yeah, yeah. No, and it's not super big, so it, it feels like there's that many people there, you know what I mean? Okay. And so how far is Greensboro from, well, Winston-Salem? Is it, like, similar? Is it, like, close? Is it, like, the same like vicinity? Because I know it's, like, you know, like, two different days, like, this weekend, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the Friday, like, so Advent is kind of from the Winston-ish area, so I wanted to put them there. I also wanted to, like, include the local local spot which is anchor which is just a cool coffee shop that's been down to cool. do shows with us and it's about 35 minutes but you know i think we were really just going to do saturday again but i was like you know what if people are going to be flying in they're probably going to fly in friday they're probably going to want something to do um I, I and i just i originally wanted to do it all in winston salem but it didn't work out so i just i figured you know honestly in hindsight it's not even done yet but like Looking into the future, I'm very much back to like, I want to just keep it one big ass day in one area. But I, I don't think it's a negative thing at all that we're doing it for the two. It's just that um, I really like the area here that I wanted to do it in because we have this one amazing spot that they just weren't willing to like come down on the price. Um, but it would have been like, it would have been really cool, but we uh, we made it work. Oh well, I mean it'd be fun. Like uh, like Friday is a pretty big show. It's cool. You got Advent playing, fucking Exit Strategy, the World. Oh shit, all those good bands, man. I really like the World. They were here, fuck, shit, twice, uh, twice last year. They did the Coldest Life thing, and then the um uh the um uh, Black Christmas again. They they came out. So you know, they're crazy oh, yeah. live. It's a crazy set. So yeah, awesome to get to see more of the world with all those fucking heavy hitters in that band it's like it's like a it's like a super group i really dig that band yeah they're great it's cool to see maddie uh doing something different and not singing i mean his old band lost for words was incredible i think he's such a great great guy uh great front man too great great singer yeah uh, I and mean, i'm just looking at the lineup on saturday too dude like it's crazy like obviously you guys uh yeah, Bayway, fucking one by one. M A D, dude. Fuck. That band's good. Um, Incendiary, of course. Those are probably the homies from the island. So Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, got Bayway going on at 420 on 420. Hell yeah. Pretty but he's like Bayway motherfucker. <laughs> dude, that band's yeah. so good. I've been I'm day one. I heard that first fucking song they did last year, and I was like, I'm in 100 percent And the sound has evolved, you know. Somewhat, but it's still as heavy that fucking raw New Jersey shit. And I'm glad to see them get uh, the pop that that's been, you know, they've been uh, working hard for over the past like, year or so. So, yeah, totally. I'm trying to get them to come here. I hope they can. They were going to come here last year, but, uh, you know, shit falls apart all the time. It's hard to, it's like throwing darts at a fucking dartboard, you know, when you're trying to book a, like a big show. It's, it's like, what the fuck? I mean, you ask 100 bands and three are down or, you know, around available. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's hard and i mean and now what you do well like is it like your your full-time thing like you want to do like tour management or is that what you do like the unchained thing or no i don't i don't tour manage i i actually just manage artists so like i uh you know the tour managers are the ones kind of out on the road making sure that everything's okay on the ground and they're in the van or the bus um but I'm the manager, so I'll you know hire the tour manager, and I'm in touch with the booking agent. I deal with the record label, and I kind of facilitate whatever there is to facilitate. But um, yeah, I've been doing that now for uh, for like six years. Uh, not Unchained. I've been with them for about two and a half, but it's more or less what I've been doing uh, for the last six years. It wasn't like a full time thing at all when it first started. It was kind of like. I mean, Jesus, I was just trying to help bands that I knew get out on the road and it kind of morphed into what it is now. But yeah, that that's what I do full time. That's cool. How'd you, you're just trying to help your friends like get on the road? Is that how it first started out when you were doing it? Yeah, well, so remember how I said, like, found out I was going to be a dad, kind of quit the band, was like, you know, I need to do something else. And I started working at like, I was doing like aerating and seeding for this company. It was fucking terrible. We were working five in the morning to like eight o'clock at night outside, throwing straw like on grass. It was 
it was horrendous. But, you know, I was like, I need to make fucking money for this kid that's that's coming. So as I was doing that, I would hit up friends and just be like, yo, like, if you need some dates booked, let me book. I mean, it was very it wasn't like uh, I very intentionally hit up people that I was friends with because I had toured with them with my old band or because we just had relationships. And it was like, hey, can you give me a shot and like let me book some tours for you? And I was really lucky that like um, I think Vatican from Savannah was like the first band that was like, yeah, you can be our booking agent when I had like nothing to show for it. Um, so they let me do that. And then like um, Lumpy, who I was talking about, who runs Days, who was in detriment with me, uh, Sanction was doing a tour with Vane. Um, and he was like, yo, I don't want to book this. Like, you want to help me out with it? So he let me book that. It was the Summer of Fear tour. And that was kind of like the first tour where I was like, oh, shit, I could like actually be a booking agent, you know, like. I did it. It worked. It was a great tour. People were stoked about it. Um, so one thing kind of just led to another. And then, you know, you kind of kept, I, I kept doing that. And then word got out and bands like, you know, Drain actually contacted me and they're like, hey, can you be our booking agent? And um, I, I started working with like some metal E bands like Creeping Death. And um, so, yeah, I mean, it was a very organic thing that took you know, time, it didn't happen overnight, but one thing led to another. And once I was really deep in the booking side of things, certain bands were like popping off enough that needed more help beyond booking. And I was just like, fuck, I mean, I learned this, I guess I can learn what it means to be a manager. You know, I not thinking that's what I was doing at the time, but bands were getting, you know, record deals and they were like, James, we don't know what to do. Like, can you talk to this guy? So um yeah that that's pretty much how that's a very 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 short not detailed way of how this happened that's fine it's a, a small summary that's okay um but i'm looking at like when you look at the roster of like the unchained thing there's some fucking crazy bands on that like 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 i don't even know what queen strike i'm pretty sure that's how you say it but that's on there fucking cky lorna shore like that's crazy but there's a lot of hardcore but death metal bands i'm sure that's more your department yeah mm-hmm. yeah, or, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah is there any like, like, uh, like out of out of the ordinary artists that you uh manage that would, would be a surprise any or is it all pretty much strictly hardcore metal shit it is i mean or is that the, like the... a you know, confidential i don't know no, not at all. Not at all. I mean, all, all the bands that I rep is, I mean, most of them have my information in their Instagram profile, but like, okay, I think yeah, the, yeah, duh. the most like out there one would be like Daryl Palumbo from Glassjaw and Head Automatica. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, yeah, we, that's pretty big though. Fucking cool. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I just, I just do Head Automatica with him, but like, I mean, the thing is I, I can't vouch or work to the best of my ability to something I don't believe in. So I like, you know, Koyo, for example, it's hardcore kids making, you know, like hardcore music, melodic pop punk type stuff that like the music is amazing. I've known those dudes since they were 12 years old. Like I, I believe in it. I've believed in it since the first day they had their first band practice. So I, I just can't, work with something that I don't feel like is good, honestly, you know, like if I think a band sucks, it'd be very hard for me to, I mean, look, if fucking, you know, it, it, it'd be hard to turn something away that's making millions of dollars, even if I hate it, but I don't, I don't, I don't want to do that. You know, I don't want to like get to a point like that. I want to work with bands and artists that I'm fucking obsessed with, you know what I mean? So I can do, do my job. Well, but yeah, so nothing really out of the ordinary. I mean, it's all pretty much hardcore bands, a lot of death metal bands. I don't really know how that happened, but I, I like 200 Saber and Sangu Sugabog, Frozen Soul, Creeping Death. Like I work with all them. Uh, that was kind of like an unintentional thing that just kind of transpired. And it's this whole big wave of stuff coming from stuff like that. But yeah, so it's, it's different. Sorry about that. Um, it's all different stuff. But it's all 
it all kind of lives in the same world. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. Especially if you have know, like 200 stab wounds, like Sanguasuga bug and a like creeping death, like you said, like what hardcore fest are they not on these days? You know, so it just fits right in. That's cool. And those, you know, and personally, those guys are you know, around the hardcore scene fucking forever. So that's yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, damn, I was just about to say something totally slipped my mind. I forgot what it was. But um, yeah, well, no, I was gonna say like you rep bands that you believe in and shit you like. That'd be yeah, it's kind of like like me doing my podcast. Like I've had people like, reach out to me to do it, but like I don't like your band. Like I'd be doing something that I don't care about, which I would I'd struggle to get through an hour of talking to somebody that I don't you know care about or what they do. So I can kind of see might be able to relate that way. Like you know, like push a band that I don't. I don't give two fucks about it would be weird, you know? Right. Yeah, I agree. So I know what you're saying. Um, yeah, so you guys are coming out here for Tide Down Fest. And you guys just – are you um, dropping anything? You guys got any – are they working on anything new? Um, I know you dropped singles, EPs, blah, blah, blah. But anything uh, in the works for uh, the next few months or anything? Yeah, we did – I think we dropped uh, Eligible to Die like two days before the last Tide Down. And I'm hoping – we can do at least a song like right before tied down again. That's kind of the plan right now. But um, if not, it'll definitely be out, I think in July, but right now the plan is to get something out right before tied down and then just do like a promo thing. I mean, uh, I don't know if we're going to do like an LP or another EP next, but like definitely just want to get like a little promo out since it's been a year at that point, since we put out new music and um yeah, just something to hold people over until something else. Cool. Yeah, man, you got to keep them, got to keep them hungry. You know, you don't want to put too much out there. They'll get bored. You know how it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think less is more right now. So I like the idea of just putting out like, you know, a song or two as opposed to like 10, 11 fucking songs. It's it's tough for a band to put out that much music and people, you know, sit with it and really digest it all. Yeah, there's a lot. Like, there's like so much being put out fucking almost daily, it seems, or. A weekly at the very least you're trying to keep up with the shit that you love and there's all you know there's not too much but it's too much for one person sometimes mm-hmm. totally i enjoy it um you know the scene in my opinion especially as a whole has never been f- bigger and more thriving especially with all the fests and all the new bands popping up and the people in bands who are in fucking three other bands and it's like, like it's like wow how do these like fully functioning adults find the time and you know i'm glad they do you know because mm-hmm. it must be difficult to be in a band do you uh, do you uh, play any instruments or anything yeah i do i um i play play the drums um i play a little bit of guitar i mean i i don't really like know what i'm doing but like you know i help write a lot of the music drums and guitar and ends of sanity um i couldn't tell you what a fucking c chord is but like i can i can write a riff you know what i mean and same with drums like i can i can play the drums but i i don't know what i don't know what anything is i'm a very (laughs) you know what i mean like familiar with that you just make it happen yeah i can play the stuff i can write the stuff but i don't know what i'm doing you know what i mean (laughs) yeah no yeah i agree Uh, no i can't pick up a guitar if it's in standard i can maybe like drop d i can make something sound okay but that's about it you know one finger it all the way yeah chug chug and a drop tuning you got a breakdown yeah exactly that's about all i got man i don't play any fucking instruments i just i hope somebody else can you know yeah yeah with shilla with your overcome fest coming up um who are you looking forward to most to you know have a play in front of the, the grand audience in the airplane hangar um, I think I'm, I'm really psyched for everybody. I, I'm I'm excited to see how Dead and Dreaming goes. That's a band that hasn't really played a lot recent years, but in the South, they've always been something something pretty special. Um, I mean, Incendiary hasn't played here in like a decade. I'm really stoked to see that. I've been seeing those guys play for like 15 years. So, yeah, uh, they're fucking enormous, huh? incendiary people love them now man they're well well they always have but they seem bigger than ever in my opinion yeah probably i mean i mean like i said 
when you curate something of your own, you obviously want to believe in it and think it's great. So like, I, I just think there's a little something for everyone, you know, there's, there's local bands opening up both days. You know, we have almost heaven, which is a brand new band. Uh, two members of end of sanity actually are in that band. And I'm really excited that, you know, both days there's something local that's opening it up. And then one by one is opening the next day. So I'm excited to see that. And my hope is that, some of these smaller bands get, you know, exposed to, to a bigger crowd. And that that's what you want when you're putting together something like this, you know what I mean? So I think it's, uh, I think it'll be really cool to see some of the smaller bands opening up, uh, some of the smaller bands just playing to more people than they've, you know, ever played to. So. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, but it seems like kind of the idea sometimes just to get everybody in the room to see a lot of the openers who you think are, deserving to be on that fucking lineup man that's cool that's cool. yeah it's, I also, it, it's also like for me i tend to pay a little bit more attention to that stuff on like other shows and festivals like uh when we played tied down we played with cosmic joke who i was laughing with mac i thought they were a detroit band like i just figured you know they were lower earlier in the day and playing a big fest like that so i just thought they were but I found out about them because of last year's tied down and like, they're great. I think, I think they're a great band. And I, I, so I like that. And I, Curtis and Jimmy do a great job of that. Like not only do they put a bunch of smaller bands like my own on the fest that are now getting exposed to, you know, newer kids checking them out, but it's also like they got the local bands who put on for their scene also on the festival. And um, I just think it's really great. Yeah. I agree, man. They fucking they did a hell of a job this year tied down with all obviously have heart and drain and fight youth of today and terror, killing time. You just go down the list, man. That's and it's cool because I noticed last year there was a lot of like which isn't a bad thing, it was a lot of modern bands, like more newer bands, and this year they, they put on like killing time and, and youth of today and shit like that. Even though they had gorilla biscuits last year still, but I'm excited to see uh killing time especially. I've never seen them before, so um, I don't know, man. Is there any, uh, I mean, fuck, is there any other bands on that fest that you haven't seen in a long time that you're looking forward to see? Or, you know, with what you do, you see a lot of the, a lot of the big fests these days. So is there any, there's no bands that you, uh, are dying to see at this point? Maybe have heart. Yeah, no, I, I was going to say, like I said, I had those tickets to see them. I've never seen them. So I'm stoked. I'm stoked to see them. Um, haven't seen killing time in a bit. Stoked for that. That, that fest is ran so beautifully, like as someone playing or as someone just hanging out, like I'm, I'm just really excited to be in Detroit again, hanging out. Like it's sometimes festivals feel really overwhelming and cramped and like that, I, that space is just so perfect, you know, and nothing feels like, oh my God, I got to get the fuck out of here and get some alone time. I'm really just stoked to be out there hanging out again and, you know, watching all these great bands. It's gonna be fun. There's gonna be uh lots to do, lots to see. Are you are you coming out for the day of? Or are you gonna be around for any of the pre shows? Um the the goal is to try and hit that Thursday pre show. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. That's the Eton one on Thursday. Eton yep. Gridiron. Yep. That's gonna be fucking badass, especially in Edgemen, man. If you've never been there, were you there last year or no? Did you? No, I've never I've never seen a show there. Okay, it is uh. It is an experience, man. I'm f really glad they turned that spot into like a sick like DIY venue. It's, you know, the best floor shows with you know, fit like 300 and something people in there. So it's really fun and there's never any drama and, you know, it all gets, it all sorts itself out in the end. It's a fun fucking place and a lot of people show up and support, but that's what it is. Hardcore. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, I mean, man, we pretty much covered a lot of this. So, uh, I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, we can wrap this up. And if there's anything, yeah, Overcome Fest this weekend. Uh, this will go out Friday. So, you know, if there's anything you want to say, go ahead. You got about them, you know, say whatever you want. Uh, no, man, just uh, thanks for having me. And, um, yeah, I appreciate you giving me a, a platform to talk about the fest and what I do and in the band. And I'm just uh, – it's always cool when anyone's interested enough to – 
ask questions and hope that someone listens. So I really appreciate it. Cool, man. I appreciate you coming on and uh, I look forward to meeting you here at the next, next month or two and fucking going to take someone's head off for ends of sanity and call it a day. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, man. Thanks again. It was good talking. All right, man. Likewise. Have a good one. Thank Peace you. out. Take someone's head off for ends of sanity. Mm-mm.